Sometimes when we're talking about the political and economic system that we live under, people will use the term neoliberalism. There are a lot of books and YouTube videos and stuff you can find explaining what neoliberalism is. And while there are some people who call themselves neoliberals, for the most part the term is used pejoratively. Most of what you see is critical of neoliberalism, but those books and videos and so on fail you if they don't tell you neoliberalism is just the latest iteration of capitalism. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. These videos and books and so on, they'll probably tell you about the intellectual tradition behind neoliberalism, like classical liberalism, uh, and they'll tell you it was implemented in the 1980s in Chile under Pinochet, in Britain under Thatcher, and in the US under Reagan. They'll tell you about policies of privatization and deregulation, and it's important to know these things. But don't think of them as a break in the history of capitalism. Like all ruling class ideologies, capitalism changes as rulers change. Governments are always changing policies, putting more money toward one thing and less toward another. We often get told neoliberalism was about balancing the books and reducing deficits, but it most clearly was not about that. We were promised lower taxes. We're always promised lower taxes. We were also told neoliberal policies were about making the economy work more smoothly or something like that. But in practice, that mostly seems to mean just lower budgets for those state services that people actually want. The idea of economic freedom gets hyped a lot, but unless you're rich, it's meaningless. I go over economic freedom in another video that I've made, and there's a link to it in the description, as always. Markets aren't even freer. They're just regulated a bit differently. Everything is still regulated. States don't just give up control because a new idea comes along. They just have new excuses to make cuts. So why even talk about neoliberalism unless we're talking about this specific period of history? Things change, sure, but policies always change with the reasons of the people who make them. Then they get imposed on the rest of us. It's not like policies used to be made for us, but now they're made for the rich, as some economists seem to imply. They were never made for us. The purpose of all policies like this is either to increase the wealth and power of the ruling class over the rest of us, or to keep us from taking it back. It's the same with the, cri the criticism that neoliberalism hurts democracy. I hate to break this to you, but the place where you live was not a real democracy before neoliberalism. It was an oligarchy. All you've ever had was a vote, and you've never had the option to vote capitalism away. So when they slash budgets for social services, it gets, at best, lukewarm criticism in the corporate media. Well, you know, it'll hurt a few people, but we have to balance the budget. But police and military budgets haven't shrunk at all, so the inevitable backlash against capitalism can still be contained by violence, as it always has been. In that way, you could say neoliberalism has shifted state priorities, but only a little. People talk as if capitalism was just fine until neoliberalism, that the post-war consensus of a job for life and decent benefits made capitalism great. When really, even then, only a small proportion of working people ever had those benefits anyway. 
Capitalism is great at rewarding just enough people to make it look like anyone and everyone can get rich and keeping people basically content that way. Leaving the 80s behind, the 1990s were times of great optimism in the U.S. because these big firms were going all over the world grabbing as much resources and money as they could and bringing a few bucks back home. Countries all over the world liberalized or opened their economies to make the plundering easier. Ruling elites have always tried to buy off their domestic populations with riches acquired abroad. They've been doing that since the beginning of imperialism. Things fall, fall apart when capitalism's plunder starts to run out, which it's doing now. The usual response to neoliberal policies is angry people demanding bigger budgets and more social programs. But I don't see that as a solution. If you know history well enough, you'll know those policies are always eventually gutted. Most apparently generous welfare policies end up getting cut or even eliminated over time because as soon as the state spends money on helping people, the people who control the state want it back. We're responding to our conditions without reference to history, so we're asking for the wrong things. We ask for, like here's an example, we ask for higher wages, or maybe form a union and demand them. Well, higher wages won't protect you and your household from inflation. They won't protect you from getting fired. They won't protect government from cutting budgets to services people rely on. So even the apparently worthwhile goal of higher wages will eventually come to nothing if we don't address the structural problems, the, the systemic problems. You need to understand the purpose of the state is not and has never been to provide services to help all people. Its purpose is to serve the ruling class. If you're not in the ruling class, you might be able to force the state to make a few concessions, but they'll be small and short-lived. Discourse about neoliberalism kind of reminds me of, of the way people talk about the new world order. It's a way of implying what's going on now is clearly different and worse than it was before. The new world order is the same as the old world order, though. Oligarchy that owns everything and forces us to work for them and makes all the biggest decisions. I see all this criticism against neoliberalism as if only this phase of capitalism were the problem. Neoliberal policies didn't force us all into wage labor, that had already happened a couple of hundred years ago. Neoliberalism didn't commodify everything, so we have to pay for everything that was once free. Neoliberalism increases inequality, but things were really unequal before, too. We're still only free to the extent police, bosses, and landlords allow us to be. Neoliberalism can't be blamed for slave labor, or sweatshop labor, or prison labor, since all those things predate it. We talk about environmental and labor deregulation, but the environment and the labor movement were never going to survive under any form of capitalism. Why do you need a new term to organize against? Capitalism is the problem. So we could talk about neoliberalism, but we could just talk about capitalism. There's no going back to the slightly better times of like 60 or 100 years ago. There's only going forward and moving past this system and leaving it in the dirt of history. Thanks.